I am curious because I'm 30 now, right? I'm 30. I say that a lot because it's the truth. But games, sometimes they just don't hit the same anymore, man. And I, I actually don't think it's an age thing. Genuinely. I think games are becoming worse. There's so many more games being released. So many of them are trash. And they just don't hit like they used to. Maybe it's because I've grown numb and my standards are too high. But I am curious how to enjoy games again. In a scenario, you're chilling in your Cheeto Dust Stand gaming chair at 11 p.m. on a Friday night, bored out of your goddamn mind, yep. looking on the Steam store page, desperate to find anything that might entertain you. You see a game with overwhelmingly positive reviews on yep. sale, so you know you gotta snatch it. You yep. buy it, then you boot it up and start playing. Your boredom quickly subsides, but only for five minutes. Then it comes back at you at full force, stronger than it ever was. You quickly alt F4 out of the game, then you say to yourself, eh, I'm not really feeling it today. True. Maybe tomorrow. Constantly. With that, you proceed to never play the game again. Just and then you know what sucks? Then I pick up League of Legends and I play League again. I play TFT. I, I, I play like all guys. Like, I don't know what it is, man. Like games from current genre just do not hit for me. They just don't hit. Like older games were so much fucking better. Like, I mean, every now and there's a gem like Elden Ring, right? But like, we all know not every game is Elden Ring. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I'll just fucking play League, I guess. Just letting it sit in your library to collect dust for an indefinite period of yep. time. We've all been there. Let's be real. But the question is, how did we get there? A decade ago, we enjoyed all our games, even though they had worse graphics and sometimes super wacky controls. But regardless, we still had the time of our lives. How did we go from being able to play our older consoles for hours and hours without even a hint of boredom yep. to today where we barely have the drive to play a new game for more than a couple of minutes? Are games getting worse or are we just getting too old for video games? I mean, obviously there's some exceptions. You know what I mean? Like, I'll pick up a Soulsborne, and I will crush that shit for days. But, like, dude, I went back and played the new Ratchet and & Clank, and there's just no way it's a me problem. Like, the new Ratchet & Clanks are just so much worse than the old Ratchet & Clanks. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I really don't think it's a me thing. And how do we enjoy games again? Well, lucky for you, I have a couple answers to these questions. You see, I too have gone through a period of my life where playing video games was less entertaining than watching paint dry. Yep. I want to share the methods that helped me find fulfillment in even the least stimulating of games. So let's- Now imagine people who love video games so much, all they do is just watch other people play video games so much. And then that same thing happens to a platform where now nobody goes on Twitch to watch people play games. They watch people who watch videos about games that suck. Like, bro, it's, it's pain. Let's get into it. Yep. But first, why does this happen? Why is it the games were so much more fun when we were children, but now... You want to know why they were funner when we were children? Because we had no responsibilities, we didn't have to pay money, and our time was essentially meaningless until we had to go back into school. Now when you're adults, you have a choice. Go out and do... Because now we can do anything we fucking want. We don't have to listen to anybody. You can go do anything at any time. So if something is not the peak of your interest, you're just going to think, eh, I'd rather just go do something else. And I'll be real, and maybe I'm growing up a little bit too much. Guys, I'll just, I'll just keep it 100%. I would enjoy walking through the mountains more with my friends than I would staying home alone playing video games. I would enjoy going to the gym more with my homies more than playing video games. Just straight up. There's very rare exceptions. But, dude, I love spending time with people in real life. Now, playing Baldur's Gate 3 with my friends... That's a good ass time because then we go for a hike. We go get some food. We all go home. We get on discord. Then we play Baldur's Gate three, but like single player games, this game's got to be fucking revolutionary to get my fucking time. Not so much. Well, there could be any number of reasons that vary depending on the person. Could be because video games were novel when we were younger. Now that we've had these yeah. luxuries for so long, we take them for granted. Fair. Could also be that your friend group used to play video games together, and after years and years of adulting, your friends slowly drifted apart, causing you to be all alone with little desire to play games. Every MMO ever. World of Warcraft, new expansion drops, everybody's grinding for two months, everybody quits, I'm the last one there alone. And I'm just like, well, I guess I'll leave too because nobody's here. And now you're experiencing that with Genshin Impact. Everybody once loved this game. All of your friends have quit. It's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to quit Genshin Impact. Or it could just be that you're working too much and gaming doesn't really fit into your tight schedule of working and napping and working and napping and working and napping. It could be pretty much True. anything. But the most
And that's the thing, like any game that I have to play longer than 30 minutes in one session stresses me the fuck out, right? Like that's why I want to play Helldivers, but the missions can go on too long sometimes. That's why I enjoy League and I play very aggressive. Either I win quick or I lose quick. And generally I would have an 86% win rate uh, over the past three months. But regardless, it's either win quick or lose quick. I, I don't like games where I have to lock in for long amounts of time because that way if I need to leave, I can't and it sucks. The most prevailing one that I hear is that video games are getting worse. This yeah. opinion is common with millennials and doomers, both of which usually don't even play video games. While it's true that the games of today are nothing- They are objectively worse. Nothing like the games of the 1980s or 1990s or even the 2000s, for better or for worse. That doesn't mean that all the games after a certain time period are just garbage. Okay. However, I'm going to make a counterpoint. I would argue that the ratio of good games to bad games of current generation is much higher than previous generations. I would say from the 1990s through 2010s, there was a far higher ratio of good games to bad games. But now these days, there is so many fucking bad games and very little actually good games. And I believe that's because of ratios and the ease of access to developing tools and more independent games. Right? Bro, the fact they fucked up Dark Alliance, like, bro, I waited like 15 years for the new Dark Alliance, and they threw that shit in the fucking blender. Dude, Dark Alliance 1 and Dark Alliance 2 were some of the best console games ever made for that uh, for that generation, and they threw it all away, bro. They it, And you know why? It's because of Joe Biden. Well... At least not all of them, okay? There are a lot of new games that happen to be garbage, but there are also a lot of old games that are just straight garbage, but people sure. praise and defend them with impunity. I thought Celebrity Deathmatch was funny as fuck. Everyone feels nostalgic about one thing or another. For some, it's shitty video games. For others, it's food we grew up eating. For me, it's gotta be the Razor Scooter. Even though it decimated my shins as an eight-year-old, there's still a special place in my heart for it. Yeah. It's okay to be nostalgic towards something, whether that be something that sucks or Scooters something that's so awesome. High. Just try not to be so blinded by nostalgia that you don't give any new games a fair shot because you don't feel the same way that you did playing Ocarina of Time 20 years ago in your family room. Oh my god, do you remember that? Now that being said, I can look back and the way that I used to enjoy games back then, I, I wanted to think it was different, right? You know, because I, I would just sit and play Ocarina of Time and just run around and do nothing and be happy, right? And I would think, yeah, that was just because I was a kid. No, it wasn't because it was actually fun to figure that shit out because I got the same excitement of just walking around and doing nothing that I used to get from Genshin Impact because I would just walk around as Kazuha and I'd be having fun because every now and then I get to hold E and jump 30 feet into the air. You know, it was good. It was like when I got boots of Spring Hill Jack and Oblivion, you know, just jump up. I was excited just to press the jump button. It was fucking awesome. Because I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're just never going to relive that experience unless you were to play older games because you should play older games now. I mean, all agree. I'm going to give you guys a recommendation of a game you've probably never heard of before, but I think is universally enjoyable by almost everybody. The game is called Overlord. It's a very old game that was playable on the Xbox and the Xbox 360. Game is fucking incredible. It's essentially like Pikmin, but for Coomers and Demons. It is so much fun. You play as this giant demon boss and you control your army of minions and you like fuck up towns or you save towns. Whatever you do determines how your character is. If you're a good guy, you can do good guy things. If you're a bad guy, you can do bad guy things. Yeah, Overlord, Mass Effect, Fable. I think those are series that everybody can enjoy. Like they are just so goddamn good. I recommend those to everybody who are looking for a good game to play. However, I do recommend starting at Fable 2. And also starting at Mass Effect, too, because they're a lot better standalone. If you're one of those people who constantly complain on the internet about how modern games suck and how they'll never live up to your personal nostalgia golden age, then I have a prescription for you. Just play old school games. Yep. I personally love replaying games that I played during my childhood, Same. like Ratchet and Clank, Ocarina of Time, Pokemon Red, everything, man. Yep. You can also play gems that you've never played before. Dude, just playing a straight up playthrough of Pokemon Red sounds like a fucking blast. If you're zooming like me, you probably miss out on a lot of classics that you would have loved if you played it when you were younger. If you're finding no joy in modern games, then just boot up an emulator and play some classics. Legally, of course, because I've never encouraged you to ever pirate a game. Like, seriously, I hate those degenerates that just go on the pirate Reddit mega thread list. They use one of these safe and detailed guys on how to download free emulators and ROMs. Like, it's just so messed up because it costs hardworking and in-touch companies like Nintendo to lose gajillions of dollars. 
So yeah, yeah I hate that. make sure you don't go on this mega thread and download thousands of ancient games for free. Yeah, it should be pisses super me off, up. bro. So in essence, if you're disappointed in modern that games, you should so just play a large selection of older games. That should help reignite your love for video. If you find yourself still bored while playing old games, it's clear that the age of the game isn't the problem. The real problem is your habits and discipline. You might be thinking, discipline? I'm playing video games, it shouldn't require any discipline to do. Well, that might have been the case for you eight years ago. In the current era, there are so many things that are feeding for your attention. Yeah. These things are usually a million times more stimulating than playing a little old story game. It really is, man. Just going like this and getting infinite entertainment on TikTok is really hard to pass up. And I'll be real, the reason why video games were so exciting was because I'd be sitting in my house listening to my parents beat each other and scream at each other, lock myself in my room, and all of a sudden, I'm in Hyrule. I'm in Hyrule, and now the bad guy, I get to beat him, and I get to win. I get to collect jiggies and Banjo-Kazooie. I, I, I get to, you know, shoot eggs at Gruntilda. I get to walk around with my best friend Pikachu, who will never be mean to me in a video game. And in a video game, everybody was nice to me. And those who weren't nice to me, I'd be able to overcome and triumph over. But in the real world, I was just a sad, scared little kid. And I couldn't do anything. My, I, I just had to deal with it. If someone was mean to me, okay, well, then now I just have a bad day. And that's pretty much it. That's why video games were the greatest thing to ever happen to me when I was a kid. Whether that be social media or short form content like TikTok and YouTube shorts, or maybe even Twitch streamers whom you have Pikachu a routine never beat of me watching with a Switch. Yeah, exactly. day. All of these things require Pikachu never much less the discipline than playing a single player game. But despite that, finishing a game is far more fulfilling than scrolling through TikTok for a couple of hours or mindlessly watching a Twitch streamer. Who's the Now, first off, I take offense to that. Second off, I will be 100%. I don't like beating games. I don't. I actually get horribly sad whenever I beat a game. You know what game I've never beaten, but I've played over 3,000 hours of? Skyrim. I have never beaten Alduin. I have never stopped the dragons. I have never completed that game a single time, yet I've done Dark Brotherhood. I've done Thieves Guild, I've done Mage Guild, I've done Warrior Guild, I've done them all. I've done every single side quest. I've never beaten Alduin because it makes me depressed when I finish a game. <laughs> My preferred way to play games is to stop a boss or two before I beat it. Preferably like two bosses before I beat it, I usually just drop it. Because beating games makes me fucking sad. Straight up. I think the exceptions of that is probably Dark Souls 1. But uh, yeah, Dark Souls 1 is fucking so good. Same thing with Elden Ring. But I'll be real, I think I would have enjoyed Elden Ring more if I didn't beat it because the last boss fight fucking sucks. It was so bad. After finishing a good game, you feel happy, satisfied, nah. euphoric even. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes you let out some tears if the story was sad enough. That or you're letting out some tears if you just finished Redfall and you're just now realizing that you can't refund can this piece this of garbage. Forever. Now, one of the best games to play is one of those Telltale games like Until Dawn, where you do like character decisions. And then at the very end, you get to see the consequences of your actions. Those games I love playing. Whatever the case, there's nothing like finishing a good game. But compare this to watching TikTok, where you get a huge boost of stimulation yep. in the beginning that slowly wanes over time. Yep. Anyways, the thing that worked best for me was slowly weaning off my bad habits for weeks until they were nothing. But before I teach you this method, I want to tell you that moderation is key. Okay. Even though short form content can corrode your attention span, at the end of the day, almost anything is fine in moderation. Damn, it's dude. up to you to determine what has Holy a negative fuck. impact on your life. For me personally, I see video games as a perfectly fine and healthy form of recreation. At least for most video games. But for some, they may think video is a complete recreation. What did that say? At least for most video Why, yes, I'm... Video games, but for some, they may think video is a complete waste of time. On the other hand, short form content and social media serves as visual junk food for me. But for you, it might be the complete opposite. And also, not all these things are equally bad. Having a Twitch streamer on your second monitor while you play a repetitive game isn't awful, but doing the same thing with a story game that requires your full attention to enjoy might ruin the experience. You decide what recreational activity is worth your while. Now that that's yep. out of the way, this is how you can eliminate negative habits. First, you go through your day like normal, doing whatever you do oh, on a yeah, daily that's basis, me, by the way. regardless of how bad it is. Log down your daily routine on a piece of paper or in the notes on your phone. Write down the habits that you deem as distracting or draining of your attention span. Then anytime you participate in these habits, start a stopwatch. You can use your phone for this too. Once you're done with the habit, you write down the time of the session on the piece of paper and you add it up as you go. At the end of the day, you should have all your habits timed out and this will give you a really good baseline of all the habits you need to improve. 
Let's say your day looks like this. Eight hours of working, four hours of watching TikTok, two hours of social media, and one hour of crying in the shower thinking about her. Dude, if I were to write down how long I spent masturbating a day, I think I would hate myself straight up. I think if I were to write that shit down, I think I'd be like, man, I am fucked up. Because you know what's crazy? I guarantee at least 1% of people watching this shit right now are currently stroking their shit with me on the, me on the second monitor. Three hours at least. I mean, it's insane, man. But the problem is it's just so much fun, you know? Something about it is just so much fun. For the next couple of weeks or months, slowly replace these things with gaming or or another recreational thing that you want to do more of, like hiking, hunting, whatever you do. The next day you might reduce all your habits by- I would do hiking, but everybody in this day and age is a bunch of pussies. Dude, all I want to do is kill animals and then eat every part of them. Like, I want to see, like, back in the days, like, the Indians, they would kill a buffalo, and then they would eat or repurpose every part of its body. And I feel like that would be so cool. You know, like, eat a whole buffalo and then turn its bones into necklaces and take its skin and, like, make a blanket. Or the natives. Native Americans. Native Americans. Native Americans, guys. But I don't know. I think that'd be cool. Because I don't know. if I feel like the humanity just, like, dishonors the killed animals they do now. You know what I mean? Like, they take these chickens, they slit their throat, they turn them into chicken nuggets, and they take half their, or, like, 60% of their body that's unwanted and just throw it away. I think it's something very cool about, like, respecting the animals that you consume in order to sustain your life. And I think the Native Americans did a very beautiful job of that for doing that for the buffaloes. Right? I think that's very, very, very cool. You know? by, let's say, five minutes or however long you feel comfortable with. And during the meantime, you make yourself play video games to fill the gap. Techie, if you want to go hiking, I'm down totally. Bro, you understand that I don't know your ass, right? I want to make that very clear. Yeah, I don't know your ass. Now, I will admit this. I will admit this. At TwitchCon, I'm taking me and all my viewers to the zoo. So, if you want to go to the zoo... We can go to the fucking zoo. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. So you guys you guys should get tickets to TwitchCon and we should go plan out a San Diego zoo trip. I feel like that would be fun as fuck. Bro, you are too afraid to hunt anything? Yeah, we kind of want to understand how that is. Yo, what up, Coral? Yeah, dude, I'm super down to go hiking, man. I love that shit. Okay, anyways, back to the react. This is a very slow but effective method of replacing your habits. It might be hard at first and annoying to constantly log your hours, but it'll most definitely pay off in the long run. Trust me. If you do this every day and keep logging your hours, in a couple of weeks or months, your habits will be where you want them to be. But yep. make sure you don't try to rush the process. You might be tempted to just say screw it and try to quit these addictive habits cold turkey. People often think that big change happens in a day. People watch these videos with a motivational speaker yelling in your ear about grinding and hustling. They tell you to just lose weight. They tell you to just quit. Well, a big burly guy in the background is chopping wood and you think, yeah, I can change. I can be different. That's right. And for one day, you go to the gym. You go for a run and you eat healthy. Then that day ends and you immediately fall right back into your bad habits. <laughs> and sometimes your habits get worse. Mm. Damn, bro. And making you binge on all the things you neglected God damn, the day. bro. Huge change doesn't happen in a day. Huge change takes many days of consistently doing slightly better. Until yeah, huge change happens in your mom's asshole when I put my unerect penis in there and then I let it grow as she screams and her eyes roll to the back of her head from the pure pleasure that I'm putting her in. So your habits compound to where you want them to be. Miscellaneous tips. If you have problems staying off certain websites, use a Jesus! website blocker. You can usually find these in the extension store of your browser. This one even has a setting where you can redirect the blocked link to a custom URL of your choice. So instead of wasting my time on Twitter, I get redirected to this motivational video instead. Another tip is to watch VODs instead of live streams. Streamers often have sporadic schedules that create a feeling of urgency when they go live, giving you the fear of missing out. If you just watch the VODs, it's easy to fit the streams into your own schedule. Does it? Do I? I feel like I don't do that. I feel like I go live at around the same time every day, and I stream for around the same length every day. Watch the VODs? Nah, fuck that shit, bro. I need y'all in my chat. And I also stream every motherfucking day. So, like, even if you miss a stream yesterday, hey, I'll still be there the next day. And I'll still be there the next time again. You know? Like, I feel like I'm always here, to be honest. And it gives you the power to watch it anytime you want. The last tip is to delete apps that are distracting. If you want to go on TikTok, for example, you'd have to re-download and sign into the app. This is a pain in the ass which can deter you from going on TikTok. 
So, when it comes to enjoying games again, sometimes it's as simple as playing games that you love during your childhood. Most yep. often, though, it's your addiction to extremely stimulating content that forces you out of doing the things that you love. It's up to you to replace these habits and work harder to live a more fulfilling life. It may seem difficult at first, but it's definitely possible. Consistency and small changes are the most important elements in this. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, make sure to stay safe out there. I think this was a great video, and I think all that this did for me was... Um, also, here's the video, guys, if you want to go check it out for yourself. I think that I really just want to play a bunch of older fucking games. I think I want to go back to the golden age of gaming. I think I want to go back and play a lot of the classics. You know, dude, I think playing Banjo-Kazooie on stream would be so much fucking fun. Play the games that made me fall in love with game to begin with, and also try the ones that I haven't tried. Like, I've... I've never played Conker's Bad Fur Day, and I feel like I would fucking love it. You know, I feel like I would want to try Cyberpunk or maybe even Kingdom Hearts. You know, like, I, bro, I've never even played a Spyro. Well, I played one Spyro. It was the one with the Sergeant Penguin. But, you know, like, go back and play, like, the classics, bro. That would be good as shit. Cyberpunk would be insane. Spyro, Monster Hunter. I've already played Monster Hunter. Sly Cooper. I love Sly Cooper, bro. Love Sly Cooper. But I feel like I miss it on a lot of the classics. We got to go try those out. Yo, great video, man. Appreciate you. See you in the next one, boys.